All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, all of you. We have with us the legal assassin himself, the one and only John J. Singleton, my good buddy. Buckle up, grab your notebooks, get your dark roast brewing, get your thinking caps on, because it's going to be a hell of a ride. A lot of things. It's 2024, so happy new year to all of you if you're listening for the first time from all of us here at Rogue News. Also, guys, we are revamping Rogue News. The site is being soft launched right now. We're going to revamp the channels. It's going to be freaking awesome. And we've got some exciting projects that are ahead. John J. Singleton is with us. You can find him over at aceofcoins.com, aceofcoins.com. You can book and or schedule a session with him over at aceofcoins.com, and he can guide you through any one of the uh, the uh, uh, things that he he's an expertise in. And uh, with that being said, there's a lot going on. R- uh, rule changes, uh, FinCEN going nuts, uh, and we have with us the guy who is the absolute pain, the absolute fear of these federal lawyers. I mean, when this guy walks in the room, these guys, the, <laughs> the feds run out the back door. Yeah. Uh, okay. He's done it for several of my clients. It's unbelievable the work he does. I uh, love him. I can't thank him enough for being here. John. Hey, thanks. Good BJ. seeing you, buddy. Yeah, good man. seeing you. It's been too long. It's been too long, man. It's been too long. But you know what? The timing is always perfect because, you know, as you and I were enjoying the holidays and as we were going into the new year, we've had, uh, let's talk about the big elephant in the room. We had FinCEN launch an attack on the small business owner because they're going to stop money laundering, John. Oh, yeah. yeah they're going to solve that problem that had, they haven't solved since World War II. Yeah. Yeah, and also threats to national security and all that jazz. Oh, yeah. He's going to solve it by getting the little guy to report his data, taxpayer information. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, that's what it is. Because, you know, when, when real money launderers and real criminals, they like to use LLCs, John. Yeah. Like that's my, my barber? Use. I'm yeah. gonna tell my barber that he better go ahead and uh, yeah. register on FinCEN. He he could be involved in financial crimes. You know, and also because you know FinCEN doesn't get to see the money moving in and out of your account, only the bank does. But yet FinCEN is gonna police what your yeah. data. What comes <laughs> up with this is how low IQ they've become, John. <laughs> and I think the law, the the dumber a country gets with its laws, I think is what is probably one of the greatest telltale signs that we're at the end of the road. That we are near collapse because the smart players, yeah. the smart crooks, the smart right. bureaucrats, okay, they've already made their money and they're out. So what yeah. we're left with are idiots and halfwits. Yeah. Yes. Children. It's the children. Not to say all of a sudden are stupid, but it's the children, meaning their intellect is they're not developed. Correct. They're just button pushers or whatever. 100%. And for those that don't know, we're talking about the Beno, the Universal Business Owner Act that went into place January 1st, 2024, where the 30, 40, 50 million plus small business owners have to, at least by January 1st of 2025, register their companies, their LLCs, uh, your uh, entire private data, your, your social security numbers, all that stuff. You have to disclose. You have to willingly break the corporate veil and disclose who the hell you are to FinCEN. And for John, for those that don't know, why don't you walk us through, number one, who FinCEN is, how do these re- how do these guys get started, and let's talk about how stupid and inane this new thing is, right. and then we can talk about any- anything else that you'd want to touch base upon, right. and uh, go for it. Okay, well, FinCEN is an acronym for Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, and it works in conjunction with the Internal Revenue Service. They're, FinCEN is involved with collecting information or I guess policing uh, economic activity, but not so much like the IRS does. Like, for example, if FinCEN detected something to do with the tax system, it would defer to the IRS. But so FinCEN is kind of like the IRS. FinCEN is an agency of the Department of the U.S. Treasury. So what it's done lately is, well, this started two years ago, by the way. I mean, they started publishing uh, proposed rulemaking in the Federal Register. So last year I started a video series on this. Well, I just did one video and I explained, hey, guys, here's what's coming up. I don't know how they're going to roll it out, but here's what I'm thinking. And nobody cared. <laughs> nobody talked about this until December of last year, you know, so a few months ago, a couple of months yeah. ago. Yeah. Nobody cares. 
So I believe, VJ, I believe that there is no legal duty to report this, but it, but I act as if everything I talk about, everything I say about this regulation, and I'll give you what the citation is, as is assuming that I'm wrong and that there is a duty to report. Okay. Yeah. So that that protects people, and so just you know, here's what we're talking about: it's the Corporate Transparency Act, and it's I believe under Title 31 of the United States Code, and it's Section 6403. If you want to check it out. Right. You search on Corporate Transparency Act. But what you were looking at is, like you mentioned earlier, is the beneficial owner information. Whoever yeah. is the beneficial owner. Now, it's codified in 31 CFR Part 1010.380, for those of you who would be inclined to look it up, which you should. <laughs> and basically, it's saying any, any LLC that's registered uh, with any Secretary of State needs to, by within 30, 90 days, I think it is, report beneficial owner information, including your SSN, date of birth, home address, correct spelling of your name, this sort of thing. Now, anybody who's organizing the company is under a legal duty, according to the regulation, to not only collect this information and then report it to FinCEN, but to certify its accuracy. So this creates a whole kind of, whole set of problems for FinCEN because FinCEN understand is the police power. FinCEN is a United States government agency that's exercising a police power and it's doing so it's collecting it's collecting uh, information as it would in a as if it were conducting a criminal investigation yet there's no criminal investigation against anyone who's giving up this information I would think so it's collecting the information as if maybe it could be used later like for example let's say the cops came to your came to your house knocked on the door and said hey uh can we get your fingerprints and just in case you're involved in a crime we can have something to verify against Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's what FinCEN's doing. Now. Or, or even yeah. better, John. How about this? Uh, you're you're sitting down with a government eight with a government uh, uh, official or bureaucrat, and he has a uh, he has a gun pointed at you, and you guys are having dinner. And you're like wondering, hey man, why you have this gun that's loaded pointing at me? Well, you know, this is for your own safety, just in case. You know, this is for your own protection. But you're pointing right. a loaded gun at me. Why are you doing that? Oh, no, no, no. I'm not really doing it's, that. It's for national security. For national security. I got to point my gun at you. It's for your protection. That's how in, insane we are, man. You cannot guarantee national security in the first place. So, you know, whatever. But so so here's the interesting thing. I, people don't know this. All right, look, check this out, man. The tax code. People demonize the tax code, the IRS. I'm going to just say the tax code and the IRS is perfect. It is the perfect accounting Huh. service for the United States government. We need it. If you replace the IRS, somebody else will come along. Ernst and Young, whoever. I just I always mention those guys, but whatever. I mean, there's always an accounting function for the government. You've got like tens of thousands of accounting cost centers. They, they have to be in place. Okay. So Financial Crimes Network is collecting beneficial owner information. That's the same identical point for point, item for item information that is known as taxpayer return information or taxpayer information that's explained in title 26 that's the tax code of the united states code and i'll give you the section 6103 and 6103 says hey we're the irs we collect consumer data that data includes name address ssn date of birth identifying information for tax purposes we collect that information and if anybody wants it he has to ask for that information and he has to qualify to get that information through the secretary of the treasury and there's only two conditions generally one is you're conducting a criminal investigation and the other one is uh it's the administration of a tax fincen doesn't do that not necessarily okay but there would be a criminal investigation so so why doesn't fincen go to the irs and get your taxpayer information 100 percent. and again the 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 fact <sighs> The fact that they wouldn't even do this, it, 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 it's such redundancy, John. It's such... They're just fooling oh. people, pushing people yeah. around. And that's why I'm saying, guys, don't do it. Make them go through the process if they're going to, to, to say, hey, where's your report? They're not going to do that anyways. What are they going to do? What if, FinCEN is not funded to go look at every Secretary of State LLC filing and follow up with every, every person, every individual. What are they going to do? Yeah. Exactly. But I assume I assume they're going to do that, right? So I went right. I went and registered an LLC, John J. Singleton LLC in Florida, January third, and I'm going to wait and see what they do. Come on, guys, 
hurt me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> hurt me, you know, and I told my clients, why don't you transfer? Let's say, let's say that FinCEN and all these rigs require you to report and, and we're setting up LLCs for people, right? And I do all kinds of reorganizations. And I said, why not just make me the corporate counsel and the organizer individually? And that will transfer the liability, assuming you have a liability to FinCEN, that would transfer it to me legally. So FinCEN would have to deal with me, not right. your company. Right. And so I'm doing that. People set up companies. Now I'm like signing on. I give them a contract. I, I'm the corporate counsel. So maybe I'm a fool. We'll see. But I think I'm suited to handle it. And I don't think, <laughs> I, think it's a, I think it's a paper tiger. It is. I'm going just, to just make fun of them. But that way, it's not. I'm not telling people, hey, guys, do what I'm going to do. No, I'm saying I will take on the liability because I believe I can manage it. I believe there's no liability. But then you don't have to worry about it. Legally, because I'm the organizer and the corporate counsel on record, FinCEN has to deal with me. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I've never done that before, by the way, BJ. I just no, you never have. I've known you for years, and you yeah. this, this is the first time you even mentioned it when I spoke to you the other day. I was like, "Holy crap!" That that yeah, because that's, that's how, how strongly I feel about this. Yeah, one hundred percent. Because it truly is a paper tiger. Oh, we're gonna come after you and put you in jail for two years and charge you a hundred thousand dollars. What? I'm Bring, it. Bring, Bring it. Bring it, please. Watch that. Watch that tactic fold like a cheap suit, John. So here's the thing. That's why I mentioned sixty one hundred three. So if my taxpayer information is renamed beneficial owner information. They just call it something different, okay? And FinCEN says I have to give it. Now that means I have to waive my rights to privacy that are guaranteed under 6103 of the tax code. No, I don't. Right. Check this out. Now, some of you out there are working with lawyers who set up your company and they advise you and they're maybe their tax attorneys and all this stuff, right? And they say, hey, we're gonna help you for $100. You give us your beneficial owner information and we'll report it to FinCEN for you. What, whatever happened to attorney-client privilege? Did you ask about that? Ah. Whatever happened to um, certifying the accuracy and who has the liability for that? Ain't the law firm. They're not going to accept that liability. And who's the reporting company? It's not going to be that law firm. That law firm is going to make you sign documents to make you liable for being the reporting company, certifying the accuracy of the information, and everything else. Yeah. The whole thing's a scam. Yeah. And this is what people need to know. This is why, folks, you need to get the word out. This whole thing is again. There's a lot of business owners. They don't know what to do. They're running a fruit stand. How can they be involved in a financial crime? What is it's geared towards actual, real financial yeah. crimes that you'll see in Wall Street? Real Ponzi schemes, real things that really happen with money laundering with real organizations. Not some guy who runs a fruit stand. You know, now, now he's got to worry about registering his company, giving out his personal data. God knows. We all know that every single one of these a holes have no capacity to keep any bit of data that you give them private. They have no capacity to do that. It's a dangerous thing. No, they don't. Terrible precedent. They don't. So when I transmit the data, let's just say on the law firm example, who's going to guarantee the security of that transmission? And then what happens if there's a data breach? And what happens when the law firm transfers it to FinCEN? Who, how they, are they doing it in a secured way? Do they, I mean, do, if they have to uh, certify the accuracy, they're not even verifying it. You have to subscribe to Intellius, the DMV, the SSA, the IRS. You have to subscribe to those databases. You have to pay money to verify the accuracy of the information. Yeah. Or you're going to collect DMV data, and then what? Now you've got that data in your database, and you're responsible for it now. Right. What's your data retention policy? I could, In fact, I did a video this morning for tomorrow's call on Thursday. I explained FinCEN has criminal and civil penalties for collecting your data and using your data. And and the regulation gives you a private right of action. Mean that means you can sue the government. In other words, the government has already given you permission to sue it for collecting your data. So, for example, let's say I do that. And by the way, guys, giving your information for know your customer type information to FinCEN is not going to hurt the use of your LLC and the property rights and all the tax protection you have. It's not going to hurt that. I just don't like to comply because that leads. I think it's leading to something else. It is. Yeah. But but. Uh, Giving all the information, so I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, it's you okay. Wanna, you, yeah. you don't want to. You don't want to share your information with the government because God knows what. Number one, they can't protect it. Number two, what the hell they're gonna they do with it? They can't you protect know? it. Yeah. So, so how is it being transmitted, right? And so, what happens about if I'm a victim of identity theft? Now there's another element there, right? So how do they? They have a remedy. So you have there. There's a private right of action. You can actually sue FinCEN. Now let's just say you went and reported your information, right? The next day. You file a complaint with them, sue them for a data breach. Yeah. 
Why not? Right. Now that creates a whole quagmire for them. What if 15 people did that next month? I mean, if you, yeah. if you, if you want to go ahead, if you're afraid and you report the data, you have a claim you can make the next day. There's other claims too, but I'm just saying people don't realize, you know, they think, oh, I'll just give the information. It's just one little thing. Well, that's why we have these problems now. That's why, see the exercise of property rights over money, the use of money, these are private. You know, you want to know something else, man. I, I think I think there's a bigger. I, I think the big play here is there's been a trend in state governments. Like I'll give an example in the state of Indiana, they their D, their DMV Department of Motor Vehicles has mm -hmm. been busted several times already uh, for selling all the data of their customers. Ooh, I didn't know they were doing that. They actually say they don't do that. Yeah, but they actually now they admit that they do, and not only that, they've been audited. And they're making anywhere between twenty-five to fifty million dollars a year on selling okay. data. Oh, that day, that money should be reallocated back to the budget. They should be penalized. Bingo. But, uh, now here's your, the other thing: your inspector general polices that, by the way. We yeah, we, we need to start a lawsuit right there, John. Just start here's an administrative the complaint. What cause is the, cause the inspector general to audit them? That's all you got to do. Yeah, I have no doubt that FinCEN is also probably trying to do the same thing as well as one of the aspects of it. Right? They right. can sell it to Dun and Bradstreet. They could sell it to various other credit companies, business organizations, other data mining companies, and God knows who else, right? Because Apart Intellius already Intellius has that same data. data. So again, Intellius, what? Intellius already has that data. Oh, there you, you, have to, you have to pay to get it. So if FinCEN says, you have to give it to us, or we're going to fine you 10000 Okay, so they just create this whole value that they can, like you said, maybe that's what they're really doing is trying to create. They don't have to pay somebody. They could just force you to give it to them, scare you, and that and that's... That's against the use of public funds, right? Yeah, exactly correct. It is against the yeah. use of public funds. And people are irate about it. They, but the problem is people are uneducated about the law. There's two things yeah. that the powers that be don't want you to know. They don't want you to know how economics and money works, and they don't want you to know how law works. They want you to think that, that money is something that belongs to the initiated few, just like the legal system is used by the initiated few. You have to be a lawyer, a lawyer, and you have to go to the bar in order to uh, to understand law, and that's bullshit. It's fake, and these are the types of fears that yeah. they lay that, that they lay upon the uh, on, on people, and and people shouldn't be doing that. You know, if you want to stop the money laundering, here's what you do: you 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 issue a rule or an injunction against all the people on Wall Street, so they can't use technology to communicate. They have to use paper. Ah. If you did that, you would end all these problems that you. I mean, or how about this? Take one step further for the for the 21st century. Put it all on the blockchain. It's there you go. It should all be on the blockchain. Yes. And, and you know, an all your public funds, all your politicians, all the, they're going to be on the blockchain. But I mean, imagine auditing your uh, congressman on a real time basis by the money on the blockchain. Yeah. And make I mean, heck yeah. And the put citizen them on the remains blockchain. private. They want to put us on the blockchain. Yeah. The citizen remains private. Yeah. But public servants have to be on the blockchain. We, we need to have where we can use money in a way that's anonymous. That's a property right that's been destroyed. It's been taken from us. We don't even know we have it. Yep. My use of money in a secret way is my right, and it's a property right. And they've already taken it. They, they took it before I was born. We're going to take it back with technology and make them have no property rights. If you're in public office using public funds, you have no property rights to privacy. Exactly. And we have the technology to do it. Exactly. It's none of their business, John. If I want to go for a Brazilian wax, exactly, none of their business. Exactly, not that you would, not that yeah. I would. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a, that's the, that's the whole entire thing. John, what else is on your radar that you're looking at this year in terms of laws, and also not just the laws, but opportunities, man? Okay, well, you're looking at a wave of foreclosures, right? Ooh, yes, yes. So foreclosures, you know, they have their system and they take your property and they dispossess you of the property. So what I've been doing, I've got a few right now that are brewing. What we did is we took the property owner who's being foreclosed upon. He's the title holder, right? He has the right to sell the property. We took his property rights and we conveyed them over to an easement. Then we recorded an easement on the property, which has nothing to do with the title. Right. So once he's foreclosed upon and, and divested of the title, then the possession of the property, because he individually, the, the, the new owner can, can get a rid of possession against him, right? Well, the easement gives him the ability to go back to the title holder and negotiate either a rental payment 
or repossession of the property. So the client I'm working with can take back the property because the easement is written in such a way to give him almost all the rights he has as a title holder. Nice. Now, the way this works is normally you'd have to go to the court system and get this memorialized. I wrote it in a way that allows you to go through, I would call this an ad hoc jury, an arbitration form. And we'll talk more about ad hoc jury sometime, but an arbitration form that's outside of the court that gives you a writ of possession as the easement holder. And you go back to the title holder that just bought your property in auction and tell them either lease it back to me or give me back the property, or I'll just, I'll just get a writ of possession against you. Right. And you won't be able to use the property you just bought. Yeah. What do you like? That's so me. you're using easements to do that. I'm just showing people how to use something that's already been on the books for decades. Forever. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. And I'm sure that you'll be able to bring that up on a future Strategic Life broadcast or in your own private groups on Telegram or on Privacy Fight. You'll be able to get into all that. Yeah. And folks, you can find John over at Privacy Fight. Just go to Privacy Fight on YouTube. You'll see his channel and his work. Uh, John, real quick, with um, with everything that's happening in the world, we see the, the situation with the migrant crisis on the, on the border. How do you see what's happening, especially 2024 being a pivotal year? Are we going to vote ourselves out of this situation? Or, you can't uh, do that, obviously. What you're going to see, though, I think is an interruption of access to resources, and they're going to blame it on computer hacking and energy power failures and things of that nature. And I'm, I'm seeing different TV shows that are kind of giving people language and the acceptance ahead of time to accept if that were to happen, they would say, oh yeah, I saw that on TV, I got that's normal. But no, they're shutting the power off to see what you're gonna do, things of that nature. I think we're gonna see more of that. Yeah, agreed. Try to uh, try to have, you know, get yourself a few months worth of food, not, not to say that, you know, just make your life easy, you know, be prepared and don't, don't wait on making investments. This is what I've, I found with my clients, they're just waiting to make investments because they think the economy is going to crash. Well, guys, wake up. It's been crashing for 30 years. Where have you been? Yeah. It's more of the same. Yeah. Go, go get in there now. The house I'm in right now, the, the person bought it for a quarter million dollars. I'm renting the house. So now it can be sold today for about twice that much. Yeah. The, the value didn't go up. Just right. the, the dollar went down. But still, just realize, buy real estate. I mean, there's just don't wait. Don't wait on the sideline. Get out and do something. Yeah. And that's always been the message that we've always had, John, mm -hmm. is to get out and do something. Don't be paralyzed by fear. You can either be pitiful or powerful. You can't be both. Yep. Very exactly. Well said. Yeah. So don't John, be intimidated how, by this consent. Yeah. How can how can people contact you if they need uh, 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 you know that you they need you know to get you in order to um, um, get you know find opportunities? Maybe they're uh, they need some uh, assistance in a particular problem that they're having. What will be the best way to get a hold of you? Best way is to go into a Telegram. All right? I've got two groups there. One is for announcements. So Telegram, Ace of Coins. Mm -hmm. That I just publish announcements. Why do We do a call on Thursday evening at 7 o'clock. Now that link is in there. It's a Zoom link. Um, I also have one called Ace of Coins Discussion, which you can participate in. Mm. All right. And then I have a new site. Now This is, we reorganized everything. In fact, we're going to move everything over to aceofcoins.club. You'll Ooh. find different video subscriptions on there going over different topics. I'm talking about LLC strategies. I'm talking about crypto investing. The new one I just took on divorcing the state. All right. I'm showing people. So the family courts are being used to destroy wealth of the family. That's really what it's about. And traffic That's industry. exactly yeah. what's happening. And people yeah. don't understand that, man. Yeah. So I have a whole video series on how to beat the crap out of that. Okay. So you'll see it's called divorcing the state. Yeah. Expand it. So anyway, so aceofcoins.club is a way to get in connect with me and then also the telegram and in my email i can give you the email as well if you guys want to do that just realize that lots of people are emailing me so sometimes it's not easy to get me absolutely best way is aceofcoins.com yeah john singleton the man the myth the legend himself john thank you so much for being on with us man i can't i can't thank you enough for alleviating the fears that people yeah. had a lot a lot of people that i was talking a lot of business owners that are terrified of this whole entire fincen rule uh, you expose it for what it is. It is a, it is a, oh my God, it's just a hack job. It's a hacking legal job. It's so badly put together. And it's also a paper tiger. So thank God for that. Uh, anything else you'd want to say, John? Yeah, please don't be afraid of this stuff on FinCEN. I've done a series of videos on YouTube on Privacy Fight. Just check those out. Um, if you want to ask some questions, go ahead and schedule a time with me on aceofcoins.com. I'd love to talk about it, but I think I covered the subject pretty well. Yes, I also put my put my mouth where my money is, put my money where my mouth is, right? Yeah. So I have contract right now where I'm the, the 
chief counsel for your LLC if you want. I'll be the organizer and take care of that. So Perfect. that won't be a problem there. But yeah, definitely appreciate all you do, VJ. Definitely. Thank you so much, John. And with that being said, folks, we're at the end of the program. Thank you all for listening in. Uh, we'll be back uh, tomorrow with uh, Marcus of Mayhem with uh, Algo Cowboy. And uh, Friday, I don't think we have Bellas on. I'm going to see if we can get Harley. And with that being said, folks, we are over and out. Cheers, everyone.